Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the 66 Pod. It's your beautiful host Fatima Loasho, and today we're going to be talking about amazing topics on love. And today with me on my couch, I have beautiful guests Jesse, Lisa, and L. Hi. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi. Hi guys. Hi guys. How are you? How are you? I'm good. How are you, L? I'm just. I'm in between. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why are you in between? I just feel bored. I feel like I need some spark in my life. Something oh, wow. to happen. Yeah, like, I don't know. You said yourself on fire. I just need something exciting to happen to me in a good way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a good it way. It will happen. It will definitely yeah, happen. Man. So I just want us to quickly talk about, you know, how our week went. You know, I'll start. My week was quite tasking. I had presentations. And I'm quite a shy person. I don't really like, you know, talking in front of too many people. So doing this is, <laughs> but yes, you know. So how was your week, Jesse? My week was good. I had fun. I had my guests. Mm. While still working on projects and doing my activities and stuff. But then I had the opportunity to chill out with friends. And it was good. Nice, nice. What about you, Mara? Mm, my week was good. Mm. It was really good. Um, multitasking as usual. But it was all right. Went well. What about you? Yeah, I think for me, I'm I'm just bored because I feel like since the year started, this is like the longest I've been in in Lagos, and I just miss the thrill of traveling for work and stuff. Oh, and oh, I'm just oh, I'm just bored. I, think I, just why, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what I miss, basically. <laughs> when I'm in Lagos, I'm always inside, so I can't really say if I'm enjoying Lagos. And it's just the start of the year, so Lagos has not started Lagos in yet. But I'm in good, Lagos. Yeah. I feel people like him are actually very proud. They are. Ah, Cause how Lagos what would you mean you've been in Lagos? You're not Lagos. Yeah. It's not Lagos yet because I'm not going outside. I don't want problems. And where I am, I see people fighting queues and all that stuff. I'm just. Where are you coming from? From Ogudu. And go back. Ah, wow. Well. <laughs> what have I Direct said? <laughs> so, on today's topic, we're talking about love. You know, what does love mean to all of us? What does love mean to you? Do you are you in love? Is anybody here in love? Are you in love? What kind of love are you talking about? Yeah, uh, love. love. Love in general. I'm in love. I'm in love. love. Okay, let's talk about romantic love. love. Are you in love? <sighs> yeah. No. No. Ah. Be- please wait. <laughs> yeah, no. Make up your mind. Make no, up your mind. Are he are might big, watch this and big. it's fine to say yes. Are you in love? It's no, fine. no, 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 no. You're not in love. Mm. Okay, what about you, Jesse? You are. Ah, uh-uh, lover boy. <laughs> what about you? I'm very much in love. Are you in love? <laughs> Beyond, you so say it. Yes, I think Me I am. Are you in love? Fatima, I think I am. Fatima, you can't think. I, I Fatima, can are you in love? I think I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm not definite. Why? Why? All this yeah. corner, corner See, I, I have my own. I have my own understanding of love, and I feel like love good goes both ways. So, from my point of view, I think I am in love. So if you're not receiving the love back, that means you're not in love. I don't think that's how it works. If you love, you love. If they are receiving it or not, that's a different conversation. Stop dragging for It's when we ask, are you guys in love? This one is you. I'm in love, okay, but I'm I've not got. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they right. force you to say you're in love. Yeah. They force it's not me by they force. Really love. She's they in love. Me. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. Okay. You people dragged me. I'm in love. I'm in love. Happy mm. love. What does love mean to you, Jesse? I would say love to me is you being able to sacrifice some stuff for your partner or not not necessarily your partner, your neighbor or someone you actually care about. Someone you can give up stuff for, you actually care for. The person can always call on you and Okay. I think he. <laughs> well, I think love is a lot of things, but I would just say that love is just the ability for you to um, put yourself in other people's shoes. Okay. Empathy. Yeah. Okay. I, I think love, love is a mixture of feelings and responsibility. Like, I think it's, it's a decision. Most times it starts as a feeling and then it's a decision. Yeah, I love this person. And then the part that we always miss is responsibility. Like, 
I have to love, like it's work, it's action. I still yeah. feel like we need to have like a, a definite, definition. like it means a lot of things to different people. Yeah. So we're looking at it from different angles and um, putting yourself in somebody's shoes, um, being able to take on responsibilities, um, showing care, showing consideration. So it's a whole lot. I think it has like different ways it can be yeah. expressed. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I think so, responsibility across or across board, I think responsibility is a constant. Like I don't think you can be you can be in love and be responsible about it. I think there are duties in code that yeah, there's work that has to be put in. So responsibility definitely for me is like a constant when you talk about love. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, and I feel if you are watching this or whenever you watch this, it's also nice for you to give your own yeah yeah nice so guys different explanations the way they see mm. or relate to love so it's nice to hear from you guys too okay mm-hmm. just things down i beg <laughs> just, 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 just things down <laughs> <laughs> so i think love to me hmm. Love is beautiful. Love is kind. You know. Yeah. Let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> love is yeah. patience. Yeah. Um, and that's why I said I think. Yeah. Because it's not always easy to be kind to people, especially when they are not being kind to you. Yeah. 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 It's not easy to be patient with people when they are not being patient yeah. with you, and yeah. that's why I came from a place of I think, because I think for me one thing that I, I struggle with is being able to... I'm trying to learn to give without expecting. You know, sometimes... Because that's a sacrifice that I think love holds. You have to be able to give somebody knowing that you're giving it because you want to give it and yeah. not because, because you're expecting, expecting something. anything mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm trying to learn love from that particular aspect. So I'm going to go into a scripture today, John 16. It's quite popular. So it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have its eternal life. So what are you guys getting from that scripture? You know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. That whoever I, I believes think, in him gets eternal life. I think it's it's a lot. I think growing up, like we had the scripture so much, it became so regular that we don't really get the depth of yeah. Of what it. It says. yeah for god so loved the world it's not saying love some people love the people that were nice love the people that were mm. looking a certain type of way like love the entire world i don't love the world as this and you don't love the world. <laughs> I'm even i feel like it's even better now because some people even have jesus at least so it's even better imagine the world without jesus first you now decide that you love it you now love it enough to come and live among them and die for them, it's really deep. It's, deep. it's really deep. Mm. It's just, if you want to know, just ask yourself, do you love the world? And when you ask yourself, think about the world, really, and all the people in the world. We have people doing terrible things in the world and loving them enough to die for them. It's, it's hard. It's ridiculously hard. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Lisa? I'm just thinking deep about it. I'm not thinking deep, I say, but that's why mine is not good. Because mm. I'm just looking like at it from the way the world is. Let me never go too far. Let me just go to probably the nearest person, I mean, the closest person to me, and then the things they do. And you're just wondering whether you should, I should use this mic, or you're just looking for which, <laughs> what material to pick up and just shatter it for them. And then there's a God who, despite all of that, mm-hmm. loves you. Yes. Like, he literally loves the serial kidnapper the serial killer and all of that so it's it's like he said it tells you so much about the depth of the love of god Mm. and no matter how we try to run like you know when we we look at things and say oh i did this thing i was like so bad and then god is not going like he loves you even in your biggest mess like do the worst of the worst worst. yeah Yeah. so yeah god loves so it's it's that deep man it's really deep yeah so for me the part that he Directly. Directly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. I get it mm-hmm. perfectly. You. I'm almost yeah. crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I get. So I have a question. So do we think that love is conditional or unconditional? You know, what spectrum do you think love falls under? Because in the world today, like if we are following, like I feel like a lot of people think love is very conditional. Love is very. I have to. I have to get something back. Like a lot of us. That's how we. We love people, even if it's like through possession or whatever it is. Like we have, we have to find a reason to love something. Yeah. So, do you think love is conditional or unconditional? Oh, <laughs> love is conditional. Though. I feel like conditional is such a massive term to use. Conditional is huge. There are conditions to why you would agree to love somebody or why you would make this decision. There are some. There are certain things that you would want to see. There are certain things that you want to get in return. Mm. I'm talking about for us now. God could love God loves you anyhow. <laughs> but there are certain things that I mean, even the Bible says don't be equally yoked with unbelievers. So now can you love an unbeliever unconditionally enough despite their their faith? Why um, can't you? To marry them. So, Why can't you? Okay, so let now let's discuss it. So I can pick an unbeliever, love them enough, even if they don't share the same faith as me, mm-hmm. and get married to them like I love them that much. No. So, yeah. So that's a con. So are we saying it's conditional? See, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't think. So first of all, mm. my personal opinion: mm. love is unconditional. Mm. So I'm looking at. Um, I mean, for the things that actually guide me. Mm. Um, when you're looking to when you're looking at something and you truly want to understand the definition of that thing, yeah, you need to look at it from the spectrum of whoever created it. Okay. It makes it easier for you to understand what it is. Mm-hmm. So, who who you, made? I mean, we as Christians, where do we draw love from? We draw love from, from God, John God. three sixteen. Yes. Yeah. And that the same love that says um, He loves you, and then He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not die, mm-hmm. but not perish. And then you made you made a statement about um, the way the world is, and then God is loving everybody that deep, that deep. Yeah. God is expecting you to love that deep. Exactly. Love enough to marry. So. So when it now comes to marriage, mm-hmm. the Bible says we should not be, is it unequally yoked or equally yoked? Equally yoked. Equally yoked with unbelievers. Now this is, this is, this is, we are talking about marriage. Mm. A marriage is something that God created. Mm. It takes me back to the point that says, when it comes to marriage, what is God saying to Christians mm. about marriage? Mm. When it has to like love in unbelievers, we love in the sense of care, being considerate, and mm. just try not to put so much conditions into it. But when it comes to a relationship mm. that you know that is the center of the will of God for you, mm. because whoever you marry will make or buy you yes. at the end of the day. Yeah. Yes. So that's like it's a decision that you should wait for even God to tell you what should go on. Because if you want to love everybody, yeah. you're not going to pick anybody. Yeah, but then that's a condition. That's what I'm saying. So I'm saying love is not unconditional. Because now the condition is God has to tell me you have to meet um, certain criteria. You have to yeah. share. So these are conditions. I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong. I'm not saying okay. your, how you, your metric for judging, okay, this is somebody I can love enough to marry is wrong. I'm just saying that itself in itself is conditioned already. You've already put a condition to it. You have to believe in Christ. You have to share the same faith as okay. me. Are those not conditions? And then God loved people before they believed in Jesus. So if yeah. we want to replicate that love, we should love them too before they even believe and marry them and believe that they will believe later. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> okay, so I'm struggling I'm, with that. A I'm bit. saying if we're saying it's unconditional, that should be how it is. We love them enough, marry them, and they they will believe later. God died before we believe, no. So marry and then they believe later. If we're saying it's Wait, unconditional, I'm sorry, you, Auntie okay. Madrito. I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling with that a bit still mm. because I think when it comes to the context of marriage, mm. right, that is like i said it's like a decision you have to make mm. which is like it will be like a center for your purpose in life mm. moving on mm. and then you ha- you don't have to do it like because you want to do it mm. you, ha- you literally have to align mm. to what god is saying telling you to do mm. so when you are saying i should love an unbeliever because i want to be unconditional or because i want to express mm. um what god is mm. It's sounding somehow to me. I don't know. It's sounding some because according to how marriage should be, God is expecting you to marry someone you share the same with. Mm. 
the same the same faith with yeah because of your faith work with yeah. him yeah. having to marry somebody who does not share the same faith work with you would deter your own faith i mean to give you a lot of problems yeah listen i'm not arguing like i wouldn't marry someone that I'm doesn't share arguing. the same no no I'm, <laughs> I'm saying i'm not disputing what you're saying in in the sense that i'm not going to marry someone that doesn't share the same faith with me definitely not mm -hmm. and that's where condition is in my love that's my condition. Share the same faith with me. I will love you enough to marry you. So if you're saying you can't love an unbeliever enough to marry them, then there's a condition attached to how far you can love them, how much you can love them. Is marriage just romantical? Is I know it's a marriage love thing, is like you'll be attracted to the person. You'll yeah, be but like there's the, there are different kinds of love attached to marriage. I think it cross like there's it's not just romantic. Like I think it's agape, no. I'm not sure they taught us in secondary school, but I can't remember. But I'm just saying that if you can't love an unbeliever enough to marry them, then there are conditions. When we say love is unconditional, it sounds sweet. But like, no, I don't believe in it. I believe there are conditions. I believe you have to share the same faith with me is one of the most one of the strongest so ones. Yeah, like I can't and I can't give you so much love. Let's be realistic and not get anything in return. Like I feel like even Jesus, okay, maybe I shouldn't say this, but see, Jesus, see. Dying, dying, Jesus dying for us, he loves us, he wants fellowship with us, there's something that God wants from us, God loves us, because he wants to be with us, and he died for us, so we can accept that and be with him too. Yeah. I feel like that might not be the biggest condition in the world, but like, it's something that we are returning, it favors us too, it pays us too, so it's not a selfish okay. condition, yeah. but it's still something, it's still something there that we're giving back, or he's receiving and I feel like that's how love is. But when we just say it's unconditional, it's sweet, but um, I don't believe it. But with how society is today, do you think we're all in love? Or do you think we truly, truly love the way God has ordained us to love as a society? Because you just see people like doing the weird, especially in this Nigeria, like the dating scene in Nigeria <laughs> is, is a big mess. Yeah. It's if it's not somebody saying somebody is sleeping with somebody's boyfriend, husband, <laughs> is somebody doing... BBL or some you, you understand like yeah. there's so much controversy in our love society today. So I like some like opinions on what we think of the love that is happening in Lagos, Nigeria hmm. these days. Jesse. Nobody's loving you because of money. Ah, uh, in secondary school, how much are they giving? <laughs> Love <laughs> sweets, that yeah. yeah. Love. I disagree. Oh, no. I disagree. Love was not sweet I in secondary school. Because by the time it's coming, by the time now. like not too what far away. Now? Ah, yes, now but it's not too far away, and then. In this period, in secondary school, a lot of us used to expect that our boyfriend would buy us. Ha, really, really. Fatima, you were pressure young boy, secondary school boy. Yes, now. To buy you something. Yes. Uh, ah, what well, you pressure boy, so. So, yeah, we, the basis of love now that uh, you know, as we and um, Lagos, Nigeria, are just discussed, you will not get money. Just that's become that norm. That's what I feel. That's become that norm. So it's very hard to, to find a girl mm -hmm. that will love you. Regardless of economy mm. hard now i feel like <laughs> yeah, but is it now men that will i feel like but, I but i'm happy men, i feel like i'm happy because i don't know if it's just my community but as for the christian community in lagos i feel like we don't we don't deal with that too much i think it's more like we're speaking like generally now what's mm. going on but i feel like now I, I feel like the doctrines i've heard from churches that i've been to from sermons that i've listened to in our community i feel like we're not on that or more economy, this guy is going to take care of my this. I mean, as a man, we na we naturally feel responsible to do, to you know, do certain things. But I think I don't think that's something we necessarily suffer from in the Christian community. If I'm being honest, but maybe that's just my experience. Okay. Mm. okay. What do you feel about this normal thing that our pastors say? You should marry a lady from your church. You guys are the same church. You guys listen to the same sermons. Do you feel it's something that? Almost, almost zero. So where would you marry from? Yeah. Would you marry a girl from the church? 
Okay, so ideally, if you don't mind from your church, what would you mind from? Uh, I don't know church now. Wait, wait, Lisa. No. In redeem. Just, just. Oh, okay. 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 Even with this podcast, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I was thinking he was coming from the place of, so if you're not marrying from your church, um, you cannot marry, speaking about faith now. Because mm. I mean, somebody from your workplace could share the same faith with you. It doesn't have to yeah. be somebody from yeah, your church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I what I was asking. Yeah. That's what, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't subscribe to the idea like, oh, love is love. If you find somebody that shares the same faith, for me, like you have to share the same faith as And I, I mean, the, the right. whole point that joins us together as Christians is Jesus. So, mm. He's manifested in different denominations. Yeah, but I so, think people, I think people like you know, they. I, I'm not against any kind of, but I think for some people they say, oh, Catholic, mm, um, celebs. No, that, that mm, is their own bias. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's all for me. It's all just personal bias. I feel like if someone believes in Jesus, believes in his death and resurrection, and accepts that as as facts, then. So I have a question here. Yeah. My question here is, how young is too young to be in love? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Let's break this table. How young is too young to be in love? You yes. love your parents from when you were two, three. No, I'm so talking about you. romantically. Romantic, yeah, yeah. How long is too young to? How young is too young? <sighs> what what like, age do you think is appropriate for people to start? I feel like dating love. to get to marriage because that's the point of dating. Yeah. Or, is, or why why are we dating? It's, yeah, it's to get to, definitely exactly. to get married. The end goal is to marry. Yeah. So how young is too young? I think bringing age is a bit dicey mm, because um, we've seen people, I have seen people get um, get into a relationship at the age of 17, 18 and get married. Uh, I never marry. <laughs> so, um, I mean, we're talking about to the point of getting married, yes. Yes. right? I have seen people 17, 18, she's in a relationship and then yeah. by 20, 21, she's married. So it That's all boils down to a lot of factors also, which talks about maturity mm. and um, how you're able to take responsibility. Because marriage is a, is a total different ball game together. Yeah. So for you to come to the place where you're like, you are ready to do, to death do us part at 17, at 18. I mean, I really admire whatever maturity that you have. Mm. Yeah. But I think bringing age is a bit dicey. Although there's a caveat to it also, because... A 20 years old person will behave like a 20 years old person Death. at the end of the day. Death. You don't expect somebody that is 30 to be behaving like somebody that is 20 in a sense. Because what I'm trying to say is eventually some of the traits of you being young will come out in the marriage. Yeah. But what is more pronounced for people that get married very early is maybe that maturity. Maybe they've come to a place where you're like, I know I'm young. I know I have these weaknesses, but I'm ready to like, Grow. work on it so yeah. that it doesn't get to manifest too much because yeah. my what it comes with my age can manifest itself too much in the, in the relationship and then can deter it and i think that i commend people that do that they know yeah. that and they work towards it so i think age is a bit that i see yeah. but hope nobody are you allergic <laughs> no, no. Okay. I, I agree with lisa i think it's a maturity thing i think you can like i said for me i think love starts most times starts with feelings, decision, and then responsibility. I think the feeling part of it, I think you're never, I think you're never too young to start having the feeling part of it. But I think if you're 15, 16, you're probably too young to really understand what it means, what, it means, what the decision yeah. part of it and the responsibility side of things means. But the feelings, I don't think anybody can really put a number in terms of age to it. When did, when did we all start dating here? JSS3. <laughs> hey! <laughs> When, just start, when, when, when was the first time all of us fell in love? Like we felt like mm, I'm in love. Fifteen. Fifteen. You didn't think you were too young at the time. Not even fifteen. Fourteen. Mm, and I didn't 14. feel I was too young. I think I, I was sure that I liked this person enough to not like anybody else. And to me, that was a level of responsibility already. Yeah, I was willing to stroll with you as long as possible, walk back under the sun, sacrifice my last card to come and see you. So I think there was a sense of responsibility I there. I still but it, now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so. That's very committed. <laughs> yeah. God win. <laughs> what a wow. Yeah, so. I'm shocked. God win. Wow. Yeah, that's, so really nice. that's a good commitment. Yeah. But I think over time, you then start to learn that decision, responsibility as you get older you now know that almost it's not all sweet it's not all rosy like mm. yeah i have to do things that are not very 
comfortable for me. And mm -hmm. when you're younger, you don't really see, see that side things. of things. Yeah, yeah, it's not really a burden on you. What about you, Liz? When did I start dating? When, when was when did you first like fall 14. in love? Really? Fourteen, yeah. Okay. How did yeah. you know? I just like I like the person. I just Are like you with the back. person? <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You don't cast. Mm, what's the law? Mm. What's the law? Mm. Well. So were you now really in love with the person? I mean, I didn't get that question. Were you really in love with the yeah, person? Yeah, I was. I mean, I mean, at the time, I think that was like one relationship that we i thought that it was going to lead to marriage okay but we got to a point where nah it's not working how long was it it was about seven years wow okay that was quite a while wow why was it like the values weren't matching up like we said earlier or no it's it was a thing of maybe values so when you, you come to a place where you're like you could just look at this thing and you're like no this is not going to work because of maybe, I mean, the past experiences, how you've handled situations previously. And I mean, I, th I think at that point where I finally had to let go was because I was moving on to a new phase in my life. Mm -hmm. And I needed somebody who was on the same page with me, but I wasn't getting the same vibe. Okay. And I'll rather leave. So mm -hmm. painfully, I just had to, I mean, things happen and then things work the way. What about you, Jesse? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't cast that <laughs> name. Miracle. No, they die. We love you. Oh. How, how long was it? Did you guys date? It was just, you just in love from afar. Yeah, and it was very, very much mutual. She, she liked ah, you. So I you like guys you. loved from afar till the end? No, no, we're in the same school. So you didn't date at any point? I dated at times. We are dating at nine, so please. But I don't think it's at fun. nine. Wait, I didn't get that. Wait, you were in love at nine. I didn't get that part. You're not yeah, in you love. Why you him? Just like ah, I didn't get nine. Nine years old. Uh, so you don't think a nine-year-old can be? How can a nine? What do you know about love? That you want I to be? Children Did you have your armpit at nine? Safe. I mean, what kind like, of love? I what kind of love? You want nine. to love at nine? I feel like we need to learn to also respect. Love your children's books at nine. Opinions, you know, as adults, with I'm coming, I'm leading somewhere. As adults or as the parent or the guardian of that child, is then to not educate that child on how they are feeling. Because a lot of us, like we like he said, you you felt something. You can't invalidate a child's feeling. Yeah. What you felt. Fatima, I'm not saying you validate it, but mm -hmm. I, now that you're even older, you shouldn't be calling it love. That's the problem. Because <laughs> it's okay at nine, it it's like okay to like assume. You're when you were nine, no, when you were nine, it's fine. You're a child, it's fine to call it love at nine. Like, you don't know better. Now that you've you know grown, better? you should know that that was I not love. You, know you like the What did you know by nine? What I'm not know? saying that I knew everything, but then I, I feel like we condemn children's feelings no, Fatima. so much that it's just like, Whatever a child is feeling cannot be real. Yeah. No, it's, it's not, not possible. It's not for, about it being real. I, it, wait, I'm coming. I'm, so I'm landing you know, somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Like, is the child ex experiencing you it? Exactly. Okay, okay, we like, have to okay, define sorry. it. The parents yeah, and the the parents mm. and the I need guardian to ask him. should mm -hmm. be able to ask questions and help the child guide their emotions mm -hmm. to know that okay, this is she, how she you're actually has it. Yeah, this is how you're she feeling. Listen, I'm not saying. This is how you should be able to navigate it. Don't you you understand? Yeah. Don't go into corners with this person. Yeah. That is when you start to educate the child to know that don't just act on these emotions. You yeah. can still observe it and know that okay, these things might change. Feelings are not constant. Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? But don't invalidate the no, child's Fatima, feelings. That's I think what I'm you're So how do you how at what point do you now talk about infatuation? God bless you, Lisa. What is a child Th take it home, Lisa. So take that's what I'm home. saying. You, the conversation can then go to making sure that the child is not infatuating and it's and he or she is actually in love. Okay, but, but your point is sorry, please. Mm -hmm. But your point is that child is able to feel a kind of emotion. Yes. And you're saying that we should not suppress it. Yes. Yeah. Like don't suppress that, children's emotions. Because in the context of love, for what we know, love is. I'm mm -hmm. not sure a nine year old can. Maybe what you felt was infatuation. Yeah. Maybe. I don't think it's even maybe. For me, so. it's always infatuation. You thought it was love in every sense of the word. 
Exactly. For me, it's always infatuation. Like you can't. I'm not saying which is what I'm saying. I'm not saying invalidate. I'm not saying your child will come that oh, I I like I love this person. Even if they use the word love mm-hmm. at nine, it's fine to understand that they are feeling something, mm-hmm. and that's fine. That's acceptable. That it's fine to guide them. But you as a parent shouldn't even register it as love, first of all. Not to talk about telling them that. or Like you can allow them call it love or whatever. But if Mm -hmm. you're saying I should believe as a parent that my nine-year-old is in love, no. Like for everything that I think love means, a nine-year-old cannot... Comprehend. Yeah, yes, and comprehend. I'm not saying the parents should believe. That's not my argument. My yeah. argument is oh, so acknowledge. Yeah. Acknowledge yeah, the fact that this is how page. your child is feeling. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was about to get heated, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so to round up this episode, I'd just like for us to share a little bit on how we know now as adults that we are actually in love. Just to round it up. <laughs> How do you know you're in love? How? Let me let me start with me. Okay. How I know that I'm in love is I'm willing to serve, you know, serve this person, serve in the all sense of being able to, like we said, be kind to this person, be patient enough to be consistent, you know, to be able to communicate right, mm-hmm. to be able to make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'm considering this person personal people or whatever it is to know that and that's when i'm in the mood of serving or in the spirit of okay i feel like i like this person well enough to want to serve them i think that's when i know that i'm in love with somebody or something Mm. Mm. that's so cool yeah Yeah. Mm -mm. (laughs) yes nine-year-old lover boy (laughs) mr (laughs) nine-year-old You don't even mind. mind. But there's this person you are just drawn to that, okay, you are ready to walk on that person. Yeah, so that, for me, that's that. That's that. So I'm benching a bit from what you just said okay. and coming from the place of correction because people do stuff and personally, I'll just walk up us. Um, I mean, just i don't i mean i don't have that energy for you basically mm. but somebody will do something and you're like no we need to call you to order what is it and mm. what's this about so that is when i know i'm actually in love the i mean the will for me to want to correct you and that's just coming from a place of i want you to be better and also love for me is coming from also a place of duty because when i constantly have to first of all always think about what you're doing what you should do always having to check up, always having to understand what you're doing. Even the times where it gets me upset and I'm, I'm upset and then, but then I just kind of calm me down because I just want to he- see what you're doing. I mean, how far you're faring and what have you. That is when I think I'm in love because like I have said on this board, I'm very stubborn. So if you can move me to the point where you do the mess that you want to do, but then I can still come to you and begin to talk about things that we can do together or you can do for yourself, regardless of the madness that you've made me go through. That is when you have touched my boom button. Mm. So, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> for me, I feel like everyone is dodging the fact that, oh, there's a tingly feeling that comes with love and butterflies in the stomach. I think that's also something that comes with love and and it's even with family like you travel you miss family that's part of love as well but even more importantly i think i'm just willing to sacrifice i feel like i'm willing to give up anything for people that i care about and i genuinely love like anything in the world to just you know make sure that if it comes to like if it comes to if push comes to shove or as you said i'm willing to give up everything for people that i love and i think that's how i know i'm in love with someone i'm willing to sacrifice i'm willing to be dutiful um and also when you look at how god loves us it's like i'm very comfortable to be imperfect before god like mm-hmm. i'm 100 percent comfortable to mess up before god and i think if i'm able to mess up before you i know that you're not going to discard me you're not going to throw me away you, like this is when this forever i think that's also one of yeah. the things i look out for like am i able to 
mess up and still be your son? Am I able to mess up and still be your brother? Be your you get that's what I look look out for, and that's how I know that you know. That's really love. nice. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for loving me and being here because <laughs> <laughs> we don't love you. Love you here. You get mm. so thank you guys so much. Um, thank you for tuning in into today's episode and. Till next time, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms and have a great one. So let's all say bye. 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 This way. <laughs> yeah. Uh,